What's up guys and welcome to the channel. If you want to hear founder and CEO of Supple, I've got another shoe preview for you all. Just this week, we started to see some pictures trickle out of the Brooks Ghost Max, which looks to be a souped up Max cushion shoe in the vein of that Gel Nimbus, that Triumph, that Nike Invincible. I'm gonna give you all the specs, the details, and where this might slot into your rotation. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so as we get started, I'm gonna throw up a picture here of the Brooks Ghost Max. And first, let's dive into the specs. So, the biggest change that we see in this shoe from the other Brooks shoes is that it's got a six millimeter drop. Now, this is similar to some of those other Max Cushion shoes on the market, but Brooks's other Max Cushion shoes and their whole lineup tends to have that 10 to 12 millimeter drop range other than that Hyperion Max, which has a lower drop. Now, the heel in this is gonna be that 39 millimeter stack that's pretty standard in the range for Max Cushion shoes. We see anywhere from 39 to 45 and then in the forefoot we got that 33 millimeter stack. Now the source who posted this said that it's coming in at around 10 ounces for a US men's, which means it will likely be in that mid nine ounce range for that standard US men's nine sample size. And that weight is pretty standard for the recovery running max cushion category. We have the Gel Nimbus at 10.2 ounces, the Triumph at 9.8 ounces, and the Nike Invincible New Balance Fresh Firm at closer to 11 ounces. They both weigh in at 10.9 for that US Men's 9 sample size. Now, this is looking to come out in October 2023, so just a few weeks away, and it's gonna have a price tag of 150, which undercuts the market a little bit. We do see that New Balance More V4 at 150, but the rest of the market, at least for the soft max cushion, is close to 160 to 180. Now, a shoe that I haven't mentioned yet that if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know that I love is the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. And that's what this is shaping up to be closest to in feel and in specs. So like the Ghost Max, the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 has a lower drop. It's using that four millimeter drop and it has an aggressive rocker like we're seeing on the Ghost Max. So the Brooks Ghost Max is playing in a very competitive market. We got that Saucony Endorphin Shift 3, the Saucony Triumph, the New Balance Fresh Pro More V4, the Asics Gel Nimbus 25, the Nike Invincible 3. The list goes on and on and on. I'm glad that Brooks is putting another contender into the ring for that recovery run max cushion shoe, but it's gonna be a tough sell for a lot of runners who already have their favorite shoe in this category. So can we see Brooks pull some more of those ghost runners upstream into the Ghost Max as an addition to their rotation. Maybe, can we see Brooks steal share from some of those New Balance runners or Nike runners or Asics or Saucony runners? Maybe, we'll see. On paper, the specs are making it look like it's fitting right down the square center of the market. Relatively lightweight, not too expensive. Has a foam that's gonna be adaptable and soft, but also structured. So I think they put out a nice competitive offering and I'm eager to see how this does and how this rides once we can get it on foot. If we wanna compare the Ghost Max to the Glycerate, it's similar to what Saucony does in their lineup with the Shift 3 and the Triumph. You have the Shift 3 as that pronounced rocker, a bit firmer type of shoe, and then you have the Triumph as that very soft, squishy, true recovery running type of shoe. Now, we're seeing in the Ghost Max here, same deal, right? It's got that strong rocker up front, and we know the Glycerin is that higher drop, squishy shoe. Now, the Ghost Max is using DNA Loft B2 foam. So Brooks is one of the best companies on the market today when it comes to transparency with their foams. They have a whole article on their website explaining which foams are in which shoes and how they're made. DNA Loft V2 isn't used in a ton of shoes right now. It's in one of their trail shoes, the Cascadia 16, but the rest of the lineup from Brooks, that core premium running lineup, is using either DNA Loft, the standard version, or DNA Loft V3. Right now, the most recent iteration of the Ghost has standard DNA Loft, and the Glycerin has that DNA Loft V3, which is gonna be that softer feel that we also see in the Aurora BL. And then those faster race day and tempo training shoes, like the Hyperion Max and the Hyperion Elite, are using a different foam altogether called DNA Flash. 
Now the midsole of the Cascadia has been described as a bit soft, forgiving, and giving a smooth ride. It's not gonna be overly soft and squishy like we're seeing in some of those other Brooks shoes like the Glycerin. It's gonna have some more structure to it, which is why they can pile up a 39 millimeter stack and have a decent level of stability. And that's gonna be one of the key things with this shoe here, right? Because a lot of runners go to Brooks for their stability and for how the shoes work well for a bunch of mechanics and specifically for mechanics for runners who aren't the fastest lead of the pack runners. Now let's take a look at the design of this. I like the direction Brooks is going with this design and they've done some really cool things recently. I have to give a shout out to them because Brooks for a long time has just plastered weird patterns all over their shoes, but they have started to clean it up a little bit. They did this recent fade pack collection with the glycerin that had really clean uppers. It was all white midsoles with just a touch of color on the upper, fantastic design. I think Brooks is gonna start going into more of that clean stripped down direction with the next iteration of their running shoes, which I love to see. So in the colorway that we have right now with the Brooks Ghost Max, it's a pure white with some black and some lime green yellowy accent throughout the platform. It looks fantastic. I'd be happy to lace this up for my recovery runs through the neighborhood. I'm not gonna be wearing this for casual usage, but Brooks, you're improving your design, so shout out to you. Keep investing more development dollars into the design side of the house as well. All right guys, so there you have it. That is a preview of the Brooks Ghost Max. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Brooks Ghost Max and where this will slot into your rotation if you're thinking about picking it up. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.